It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. What's up, people, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And today, I want to continue with another portion of Discovery. Now, I did a live that I talked about um, the motion to compel, which is Vaughn V. Rosen. And, and I did another video and I talked about what the prosecutor must have. I also spoke about Youngblood, where it stated, even if the police doesn't turn it over to the prosecutor, this is what happens. Here's the greatest portion of that, because discovery in the federal rules of civil procedure, which is rule 26, the duty to disclose or general provisions governing disclosure and section a is required disclosures and that's one the initial disclosure because at the end of the day the prosecutor is responsible as the accuser to prove their point of the accusation and then we'll go to in general as except by rule 26 a 1b or otherwise stipulated or ordered by the court a party must without awaiting a discovery request because if you remember in the live i talked about georgia has it once you enter your entry of appearance they don't have to wait the 10 days for the request they only have 10 days once that's submitted and that's because again Federal rules govern the actions of the state because everybody is deemed to be acting as enforcing constitutional law, which is federal codes and statutes, Supreme Court decision. You know, Howlett v. Roe, the shit that I say constantly that for some reason that's the enforcement of the supremacy clause, but most people don't get and they must provide this to the other party. The name and if known, the address and telephone number of each individual likely to discoverable information, along with the subjects of that information that the disclosing party may use to support its claim or defenses, unless it would be solely for impeachment. Now, they don't have to turn over something if it's deemed that you can only use it to kind of turn over what they're trying to say. But there are exceptions even to that rule. Two, a copy or description by category and location of all documents, electronically stored information and tangible items that the disclosing party has in its possession, custody or control and may be used to support its claims or defenses, unless used would be solely for impeachment. And again, there are things they have to turn over unless it is just damning for them, which means they don't have a case. Because remember we talked about that one thing, prosecutorial discretion where they're cherry picking cases. So this is what happens when that's no longer available. Three, a computation of each category of damages claimed by the disclosing party. Remember I talked about an injured party? Damages can only come from injury. Damage to person or property. That's how you have standing that can be redressed. Oh, okay, the shit that I've said a hundred times right here in federal law. To who must also make available for inspection and copying under Rule 36 the documents or other evidentiary materials unless privileged or protected from disclosure on which 
Each computation is based, including materials bearing on the nature and extent of the injury suffered. Did it actually just use the word injuries? Suffered? So that would mean they have standing because there is an injured party? And then lastly, for inspection and copying under Rule 36, any insurance agreement, would that be their bond? You know, I've said, yeah, because that would also fall under their oath of office. Under which an insurance business may be liable to satisfy all or part of a possible judgment in the action or to indemnify or reimburse the payments made to satisfy the judgment. These are the things that are set, not by me. Because it doesn't matter if you like me, it doesn't change federal law. This is the duty to disclose for what? The violations. Due process. Brady v. Maryland. Clean hands. Good faith. So all this shit that I'm saying actually makes sense because I'm reading it directly from federal law. So disclosure. These are the things that follow it up. These are the things that make it to where it must be done in a certain manner. That's all I got right now. I'm gonna keep it coming. I'm gonna keep coming harder and harder and harder. I appreciate all the donations. Apple Pay, Venmo, Google Pay, Cash App, and Zelle. Let's keep going, let's keep growing. And thank you guys for the donation. And today's episode is sponsored by Jennifer. Let's go.